they took advantage of the opportunities they had. I was kind of concerned on how fatigue was going to set in today, but it looks like uh, Coach Fay is doing a good job spotting some other guys in, spread it out a little bit so that he's not draining the first two lines, but I thought Swampscott played a great first period. One thing you notice about teams as they get deeper in the tournament is senior leadership and experience, and boy, Swampscott's loaded with the older kids uh, from the goal right on out with Cotter Spotty and Santanello and Benoit and, and such. Well, if you look, the, you know, obviously Johnson and Gold's tremendous goaltender. He brings them a lot of confidence. Uh, they have a great leadership and defense uh, with number eight. And then, like you said, the flow at Sentinello sees the ice real well. And he's got some great support from a couple of the other line mates. And, uh, you know, it's good for Swampscott. I think Swampscott played real well. They've been competitive this year. They did very well against the NEC North teams this year. So they, they're here because they deserve it. Well, uh, Bobby will stay with us for the first couple of minutes of this period and uh, comment and we'll give Chris Weber a, a quick break as we uh, start period number two. Swampscott with a huge goal with under four seconds to go on the power play and that uh, we were saying at the end of the period that's a momentum killer for Whalen. Well it really was because if you look back at it Whalen had a couple chances to get it out and they lost the battles along the boards and thank you know Swampscott did a great job Sentinel pick up the puck along the boards and uh, you know, was quick enough to go to the net and find number 11 off the post for, you know, tapping. I mean, it was a great, great play by Swanson. Oh, there we go. Well, an answer by Whalen. A nice play there. A tip in uh, on the doorstep and a good throw it to the net from the sideboards. I think that was uh, Chitkara number two. And it looked like uh, it was Riley Bonner who got the goal, I believe. So Whalen right back in it early on, under a minute in at 40 seconds of the second period, Whalen ties it up, uh, doesn't tie it up, they cut the lead in half. I'm sure that one of the things that Whalen talked about was if you look at the first period, they didn't get a lot of shots the first five, six minutes. And I'm sure the coach came back out and said, let's throw a lot of things at the net and see what happens. And that's a good result. So now you get yourself a good game and see how everyone reacts to it. So Whalen uh, right back in things. Uh, all that talk about momentum, they come out and uh, carry the play in the first 40 seconds and uh, tip one by goaltender Johnson. Not an easy thing to do. No, and this is uh, high school hockey at its best. This is what this is what it's all about. This is what's fun. You know, you got to be careful of those turnovers right there. Crowley, yeah. Crowley trying to find his defense partner, Jimmy Paw, and he threw a shot on net. And Nola, good thing Nolan was paying attention there. <laughs> you got that right. If he wasn't, that could have been a very embarrassing opportunity. But, you know, it's going to be, a, I think, a great second and third period. I know both these teams played the other night, so I think fatigue's going to be a big issue as we get into the third period. So we'll see what happens. I like this line for Swampscott, kind of a, an energy line. Two sophomores and a junior here, the 2-3-4 line. I tell you what, when they get a little stronger uh, and a little bit more experience, they're going to be tremendous. I think uh, number three and number four can really uh, see the ice well. I think number two complements them. It's, uh, it is. It's a great line for Swampscott, and uh, they've had energy for this group the whole year. Whalen now uh, will move it out of their own zone. And a, an attempted hit there, and they take the puck away from uh, Evan Vasilovsky, who was rushing it up ice. And here's Oliveri. Oliveri in the middle. Just misses connections with Donovan. But again, uh, they, they like to move the puck. I mean, we said in the first period, Whalen impressed me with the way they, they move the puck among players. And uh, Swanscott trying to mimic them there with a nice play, looking for the open man. You know, if you watch if you watch all the teams, whether it's pro or college or high school, you know, trying to find that position in front of the net so you have your best opportunity is great. And, and I think, you know, looking for the trailer or looking for somebody coming to the net or supporting the puck carrier, Makes it very, very difficult for us. You know, his number eight, he's got some great speed. You know, we were talking a little bit about. Yeah. What a surprise. Caught his body in Santanello. I mean, Santanello, great sense to just kind of lay back. He didn't go 100 miles an hour. He laid back and caught his body, found him. And you know, they've done that 100 million times in practice. Well, you know, it's a perfect example of how speed and taking it to the outside and spreading the defenseman apart. So he did a great job taking the defenseman to the outside. As you said, Stevie Santanello stayed right down the slot, slowed down a little bit to give himself position. It was a great feed and an easy tap in. I mean, the goalie didn't have a chance. Cotter spot, he's got the puck on his stick a lot. Big number eight. Well, he's a big he's a big kid. He loves the puck. Uh, you know, he skates with it well. Uh, and as I said earlier, he's a you know stalwart back there in defense. And he doesn't mind playing the body once in a while. And, uh, I think his ability to move the puck and skate with it is a big help for Swanson. Absolutely. 
Here's Barnes losing it in front, and a turnaround and a shot by Chikara. Stopped there by uh, goaltender Johnson, but again, he had to be alert. Here's O'Keefe starting up the left side for Swampscott, and he'll dump it in deep behind the net. Whalen controls there, they get it to Chikara, who throws it to the line, but not out. A shot from the left point by uh, 17, Jack Posca, another big veteran there, number 17 for Swampscott. I mean, they've always got veteran presence out there. Yeah, Posca actually had a very good year. I think he was shadowed a little bit. Uh, but he, again, is a very, very steady defenseman. Uh, I think if you look at the minutes that the two of them play, they play quite a bit on, on, the, on the back side of it. Um, you know, I think the one thing you're seeing right now at the start of the second period is the tiredness of it. But there's been two or three turnovers on both ends that you really haven't seen in previous games. I think that's a little bit of fatigue at this age. Santanello hit by Leiden on the far boards. And, you know, one thing I've seen Whalen, here's a rush by Posca. Posca in front trying to find uh, Santanello, who's wide open in front of the net. Yeah, they're going to have to put a man on him, otherwise he's going to cause some more damage. Griffin Bielman with it back at the red line for Swanska Hill. Lifts it high, deep in the left wing corner. Caroms all the way around the far side of Mike Jones. Whalen, it seems like the same guys are out there more and more. It's, it's like they've already shortened the bench here. Again, veteran guys, but they're going to get tired. Well, that's the problem. You get a wider rink, you get a bigger rink than they're used to playing. Um, you know, so it's going to be interesting as the second period, as the second period winds down and you take it into the third period. So I hope that they, you know, both teams can maintain the uh, speed and the uh, energy that they bring to the table right now. Well, we'll give you one more whistle here, Coach Jackson, before we bring Chris Weber back in. It's a pleasure to be hosting Coach Bob Jackson, a Marblehead header's head mentor. And talk about your year was a little different, you know, from uh, the last couple of years. And uh, some kids have to grow up because you're playing a lot of young kids. And, you know, you have those years. We, we, we did, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, we didn't have as much success finding the back of the net this year. And uh, that's a big big difference. Uh, we only scored 50-something goals this year and in a 22-game schedule. That makes it kind of difficult. Yeah, five, do the math. <laughs> yeah, five, five on five, we actually were very competitive with a lot of the teams. So, you know, I look at, I look at some of the teams that played and moved on and, you know, we did well. We just uh, uh, just need to work for 45 minutes, not 36, and we have to stay out of the box and score more goals. So we'll work on it, uh, focus on it, and hopefully we'll be back in contention next year. Yeah, most of the scores were very competitive, but they were just, you know, they weren't going to the right column exactly. at the end of the year. But. Exactly. But, you know, the, the one thing that I will say to the kids, and I said at the banquet, is, you know, when, when you're 1 in 12, and at this age, it's easy to sit there and say, why do I want to get up at 4.30 in the morning practice? But give the kids credit. They came hard and practiced every single day. It didn't matter. And, you know, we ended up 4-0-1 in the last five games. So yeah, they know, we'll stayed take, with it. Yeah. We'll take that. Nice job. Well, congrats, Bob, and uh, keep the program going up there in Marblehead, and next year maybe you'll be here ahead of Swampscott. You never know. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate it very much, and have a great day. Thanks. Always a pleasure.